Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now today's job is to start plasterboarding the walls. Um, and I used to do it with dot and dab adhesive, but I've recently, or well, within the last six months, found an easier way. And it's to use this, it's an expanding foam. It's called Sticky Foam. This particular one's from Screwfix, it's their own brand, and it's really good value for money, this one, but there are more expensive brands on the market. Now, with traditional dot and dab, it was messy, you had to mix it up. If you had stuff over, you had to get rid of it. With this, it's just in the can. You spray it on. It says on the back that it does about five plasterboards, but in reality, you get three to four, maybe. Um, but it, it works out to probably a bit cheaper than using dot and dab anyway. So I'll show you how I stick plasterboard to solid walls with foam. So I've prepped already. I've got a piece of wood on the floor, a bit of 3B2, just to hold the plasterboard off the floor. The reason being so that the plasterboard doesn't take up any moisture out the floor. You always leave a bit of a gap. And I've isolated the electric safely and the wire, or the cables, I've encased in this plastic conduit or plastic capping, just to stop any foam from sticking to the wire. Okay, so I've safely isolated the sockets and the extension and I've locked them off, took the key with me and I just need to stick a sign on saying that there's work being carried out on the electrics. Okay, so the first thing I've got to do is cut out for the socket in the plasterboard. Now I've got a little tip for you with that. So I'll show you that now. Get the plasterboard in place where you want it and then take a, a mallet, thanks to Ox for this one, and where the socket is, just give it a little tap and that should have marked the back of the board to tell me where it is and it's easier than marking and measuring with a tape measure. I don't know how well that shows up on camera, but there's the outline of the box. So what I do is just get a 3mm drill bit and I just drill through in each corner. Turn the board back round. Get a straight edge and just join the holes up. Just need to cut that out now. So again, thanks to Ox for providing this plasterboard saw or jab saw. That should fit over the socket. It's not bad. Right, so now that I know it's going to fit, I can just lay the board down and apply the foam. If you do it while it's stood up, it tends to roll off. So the instructions say to shake this up for about 30 seconds. Right, and that should do. So it says to put it in beads of about three centimeters or 30 millimeters. So I like to do all the edges of the boards and then round the sockets and then do lines up and down. So that's what I'll do. This way it just supports all the edges of the board. Okay. 
Right, so I've just got to leave that for five minutes to just go a bit tacky. So five minutes is nearly up, so I'm just going to dampen down the wall a little bit. Because it's breeze block, it's really dry, and the, the foam cures better in the presence of moisture. So just a little squirt of water. So it's time to put the board on. Right, and um, it's probably best to wear some disposable gloves because if it, if it gets on your hand, it'll probably take a week to come off. But I'm used to it, so it doesn't really matter. It's just a case of getting some contact with the wall. Make sure that it's plumb, which that is. So somewhere where it's bellying out, it might need the odd screw in it mechanical fixing just to keep it in place but generally it does tend to just tack itself where it needs to if there's a bit of flex in the board you might have to hold it there for five minutes or you can put the odd screw into it just to hold it in place while the foam goes off and the good thing about the foam is after an hour it's ready to plaster so you haven't got to wait like you have with dot and dab so yeah Pretty simple to do, a lot tidier than dot and dab, no mixing, I've got nothing to clean now, apart from a little bit of over foam on my gun, but that's easy just to, to break off. Yeah, another benefit with this foam as well is that it sticks to a lot of things. So if you read the back, it sticks to plasterboard, rock wool, Insulation board, bricks, concrete, plaster, wood, metal, aluminium, stone, ceramics, MDF, polystyrene, steel, lead, zinc, polyurethane, laminate, cork, chipboard, timber, bitumen, and many more materials. So in here, I've got a got breeze block walls, got plastic trunking, and I've also got steel. So it'll stick to the the steel RSJ, no problem at all. It is really good stuff. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time.